Hi, this is Varun Nagraj. I'm Chief Operating Officer at Bijli, and I am delighted to have the opportunity today to, to chat with someone I've worked with on and off over the last year or so, uh, Kelly James from Salesforce. Welcome, Kelly. Thanks, Varun. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, thank you to, to Bijli, and thank you to all of us for joining us here today. Happy to be here. Uh, thanks, thanks. So, you know, a quick observation to start with. Obviously, digital transformation is gathering momentum across various industries. And companies like Salesforce and SAP and others have clearly demonstrated that they play a valuable role in enabling such transformation. But specifically within the utility industry, what role is Salesforce playing uh, on this digital transformation journey? Salesforce has been focused on um, industries for, for a little while now, but um, many of you may you know, know Salesforce much, much better as, you know, uh, from the historical reputation as maybe more of a uh, broad and, and leader in CRM. Historically, Salesforce hasn't focused on industries. They've put out industry products for a number of key industries. And there was a company that I was part of and how I became part of Salesforce through an acquisition of a company called Velocity. Mm -hmm. And about five or six years ago, um, some folks that were uh, actually part of working together a long time ago with, with Mark Benioff and some of the board members and founders of Salesforce got together. And David Schmeier, who was the CEO of, of Velocity, was looking for a company actually, in fact, to invest in. But he was looking for a company that was doing deep in, um, industry products on Salesforce for industries that had traditionally been underserved and traditionally maybe um, you know been a little bit behind in certain parts of customer experience, customer service. He didn't find that company to invest in, so he decided to start one. And so that was Velocity. And Velocity was started as in agreement with and in dis full discussion with Salesforce as a core ISV partner to say, we're going to go after this set of industries. We're going to try to go deep and really serve these industries. And those are telecommunications, media and entertainment, energy and utilities, insurance, the health and health insurance and public health sector, and then some parts of public sector as well. So six years fast forward, We've been um, building depth in industries on the Salesforce platform, 100% um, on the Salesforce platform. And then, and Salesforce has also been investing in industries and it all kind of came together uh, at the beginning of this year in the announcement of the Salesforce acquisition of Velocity coming into the house. We call it now the inner Ohana. We were kind of cousins before. We're in the inner Ohana now. <laughs> and also with that closing of that acquisition, actually a, a kind of expansion and reimagining of Salesforce Industries. David Schmeier is now the, the CEO of Salesforce Industries. And we brought together the power of the industries they were already investing in at Salesforce and then all of the ones that we brought with Velocity. You know, some come together in like supercharging certain industries and in energy and utilities, Salesforce has made some investments in and around energy and utilities, but really with Velocity coming in, we can become that um, service, that sales core, and then working very closely with things like the field service lightning and lit components of things like the marketing cloud and bringing that to life, that end-to-end -end customer centric, you know, digital transformation for utilities. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we are doing. Um, and it's, it's a super exciting time to be part of this all, like yeah, coming together and really ramping up. Now, you, you noted that uh, part of the value that Velocity brings to the Salesforce portfolio is providing sort of a vertical uh, feel or a vertical set of knowledge and information. Uh, can you give some examples of what that kind of vertical um, knowledge, whether it's workflow based or analytics based might be? that makes the generic Salesforce platform better? You know, we believe if you're going to do industry specific products, you, you need to invest in them. They need to be both broad and deep. Um, that's, the, that's the way you're successful here. That's the way you're actually truly um, bringing value to the industries that you serve. And so that's, that's what we're doing. So if you think about, let me just give a few examples. If you think about just general acceleration to start, which isn't all that we do, but is part of what we do. So if you have Salesforce, then what we're doing is saying, hey, we're going to start you with a complete service console that's tailored for energy and utilities and recognizes that energy and utility companies have a lot of data stored in historical legacy or back office products that we need to collectively surface to get a true customer 360 view. So that means we bring, for instance, for a contact center user, 
we bring a full console ready to go, ready to be integrated and with some pre-integration to some of the major back office systems. We also bring the direct to customer capabilities around certain things in my account and how you perform certain service moves in, in that integration to field service. You know, how do you bring all of these different things together into a single front office view? And also the key to marketing and analytics, surfacing personalized messaging, surfacing the personalized data-driven both information and actions to whoever it is interacting with the customer or to the customer themselves. And when I say who, mm -hmm. I mean, whether that's a human, whether that's a, um, an AI-driven digital interaction, or whether that's you know, themselves engaging on a website or another digital, digital channel. So we're bringing um, all of that and we're making it utility and energy specific. We know these industries really well, and we're bringing some depth and some kind of engines or functional modules to Salesforce that are specific for the needs of, of utilities. Um, and let me give you one example that actually is in the, the kind of the retail energy space um, and that more and more regulated utilities are adopting. The idea of a rate is great, but utilities are looking at rates and products and services and then ancillary services and products. And so they need this thing called a product catalog, which is different from the billing system, a data-driven personalized set of recommendations that they can adopt and in some markets they can purchase directly. And so that product catalog, that CPQ engine with the prescriptive method of how it integrates to the back office, those are engines we brought and built on the Salesforce platform that are now part of Salesforce for energy and utilities. There are these um, vertical uh, or, or industry specific, domain specific bodies of knowledge and best practices that can be brought to bear on, you know, generic business processes, I think is a powerful one. But increasingly, as you pointed out, what we're in our conversations with utilities, they're saying, how can you enrich um, our existing business processes with the insights that you have? Yes. You know, our CRM, our call center operator is taking a call from an irate customer about a high bill. You guys have information within your system as to why was the bill what it was, you know, and, and what part of it is explainable and what part is not and what can the consumer do about it? So what we've been focusing on is sort of how do we take our insights and, and plug them into the appropriate parts of the workflow so that the whole workflow now is suddenly much more utility specific and energy specific as opposed to a generic, you know, call center uh, type of a product. And yeah. so it's nice to see us both doing similar things. And I'm sure, you know, even between your workflow products and our energy uh, insights, you know, there are clearly some, uh, you know, overlaps. Yeah, but we put it together and it gets really, really powerful. I mean, you guys have done some great, um, great things over many years um, with deep data insights on um, whether it be interval usage data for, you know, residential customers or even more broadly now, you know, looking at um, taking what you guys have always done really well with disaggregation and looking at and applying that further to the, to, more and, and um, bigger types of problems, uh, problems, but that are really opportunities for for these these companies. Like, you know, when you have customers with electric vehicles, when you have customers with storage, when you have customers who are um, who are prosumers who are producing as well, and kind of looking even more more deeply into that. So I think you know the the some of the great things that Vigily's done here as, as you know, we've, we've worked on together now quite a bit as plugged into the right moments in time and then supplemented with some of the data that we can collect and capture through, for instance, marketing cloud and through, um, through uh, the, the service processes that, that we're supporting is really how we get to that level of advisory services that our utilities are looking to do because it's really, you know, it's about, um, depending on where you are in the market, it's about, like for everybody, it's about bringing the value to the customer that they're looking for. And that might take the form of like, help me solve my, my issue with balancing my bill with being comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, or it might you know, go all the way to taking the form of um, help me with this deep analysis that I'm trying to do about whether it makes sense and when it makes sense for me to put storage install electric vehicle charging versus, you know, um, mobile charging, or even potentially participate in something like a, a virtual power plant rate program where you're essentially, you know, you're, you're working with the utility to supply back uh, over production at the right times and to divert to storage at other times. So right. like we're getting, um, I think it boils down to, we, utility customers are asking a, a more complex 
question of us, whether some of them paying a lot of attention, some still not paying attention, but they're asking, they're also asking their utility to advise them and help them often with their sustainability, personal carbon and sustainability goals as well. And so we need the type of deep insights that, that you're providing and coupled with, with the processes and some of the insights we're providing to do, to do that for you know, utilities so they can help their customers. You know, so, so two specific examples, uh, Kelly, I think you and I have talked about are sort of the 360 degree view and, and the catalog. So in the 360 degree view, you know, one of the easiest use cases to really go after is the fact that if a 360 degree view on Salesforce uh, is encompassing all the touch points between the utility and the consumer over time, um, Bidgely as a standalone solution produces a series of touch points of its own with the consumers. Yes. But really it is far more powerful when it is part of that 360 degree view, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's one example of a relatively simple integration, you know, where Bidgely sent emails are sort of, uh, included or incorporated within the Salesforce 360 degree view of all touch points that have happened. Or in the case of the product catalog that you guys put together as people look to sell not just new rates, as utilities look to sell not just new rate plans, but also other products and services, is finding out what do you want to talk to a particular customer about? You know, So the visually right. insights saying, this particular person you're talking to, uh, in fact, has a um, single speed pool pump that is known to be inefficient and therefore represents a good candidate for a variable pool uh, uh, pump upgrade program mm -hmm. is valuable information for the person using the product catalog. You know, so that's another example of where, you know, Salesforce insights and Salesforce infrastructure and, and, and Bidgely stuff can come together to improve that part of, uh, you know, the utilities business process. Yeah. And that, that's, that's, those are great examples. That's a, uh, that's a next level of really targeted personalization right. that we're trying to, um, with the way we're, we're bringing together data, um, trying to serve that up in a you know, completely frictionless way at the moment that you know, it's gonna mean something to that customer. So we're talking not about, and hey, maybe you'd be interested in this set of stuff that may or may not apply to you. We're talking about, hey, we, we're pretty darn confident that this one thing will save you money. Right that's, right. that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Where do you think there are opportunities for the utility industry to step back and say, you know, I really should take a broader view of what customer experience is and what goals should they have? You know, are, 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 are CSAT and traditional metrics the right goals? What does a net promoter score even mean if you have a captive customer like many yeah. utilities do? How should we look at customer experience and successful customer experiences in, in the utility industry? If we go back to some of you know, historically what utilities really, you know, how they measure themselves and how the commitment they, they've made and the kind of social contract that they have with their customers. It's, it's about reliable, safe, and really affordable, um, affordable supply. But taking that forward into the future, yeah, we still, very important still, J.D. Powder, power um, your customer satisfaction metrics, but it's about, you know, continuing to earn the trust and the right to serve customers and to provide more and more in terms of advisory services and, and where possible, where, where it's an option in the market to either provide partners that can do provide you know, more services to them, more uh, types of um, different offerings to them, or even directly from the utility or, or uh, energy provider. So it's about earning that right. You know, there are some more uh, measures of engagement and, and other things that we track. Um, and I think utilities are thinking more broadly about customer experience, but, um, uh, you know, being a trusted advisor, earning, you know, earning the right to continue to provide more and more advice. I think the key word that I'll, I'll, I'll build off of is trust, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Kelly, because trust buys you options, you know, and even if you're a utility without competitors uh, in your given area, uh, you still need the consumer's trust to have them take certain actions that might be the right actions for their own good, for the utility's good, and for society's good. Uh, you know, asking somebody to do the right thing for energy efficiency purposes is a much more palatable message coming from somebody that you trust as opposed to somebody that you don't. And so, as you said, you have to earn the right to be heard. That's what is raising the bar in my mind for customer experience. It's not just a question of, hey, let me send a welcome email when the person comes in. Let me send an outage alert when something happens. It is being there, as you said, in the moments that matter. The next wave of AI that we are seeing, 
I, I'm, I'm guessing is not that different from the way you look at AI. Our next wave yeah. of AI has really been around personalization, where we've taken the challenge of segmentation. We see a lot of utilities now asking for, mm -hmm. hey, I, I want to treat four or five segments differently. You know, the, the budget conscious person, different from the green conscious, different from the tech conscious. But the fact is, you know, we are all combinations of these things. You know, I am some days I'm budget conscious, you know, some days I feel green and some days I feel very yeah, you're budget conscious until you're really hot, right? <laughs> that and is then, true. Yeah. You know, and then I'm not green conscious anymore either, right? Yeah. And I'm just comfort conscious at that point. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. So the point is, I think, you know, and this might almost be a challenge to the utility um, uh, sector here saying, you know, is, is thinking about segmentation really good enough, right? You know, mm -hmm. the industry has moved to segmentation. Utilities are thinking of segmentation. But, you know, what if we placed a challenge and said, look, nobody perfectly fits inside one segment. Yeah, people have traits of every segment. So how do you use AI to determine what combination of traits people have so that you address them and personalize your messaging and personalize your recommendations to them appropriately? That's interesting because I'll bring back the, the platform access um, aspect into it. So we've got Salesforce as as a platform and, you know, it's our we continue to drive to ensure that we're, you know, we're tracking uh, and and monitoring on the you know for the utility as much as much as we basically can and learning from and then and like now as you said taking that a step forward learning from where things were abandoned learning from whether it's actually the customer who's we've lost them at some point the personalization was ineffective or you know they they walked away whatever it is learning learning from that and feeding it back in to say can we you know test and be more effective in each of these different processes so there's the customer side and there's the same as well for the um, employee side you know what worked and didn't work and so mm. as you say we're taking you know we're taking um, the analysis we're taking the measurement and then now applying AI to look at um, to look at that and to learn from it and to, to help us then develop new, you know, new ways of, of ensuring that, you know, we're putting the right things in front of customers at the right time. So they're able to, to take them up. They're able to, to drive towards the, um, the goals of the, the utility company, you know, utilities have um, these key measures that they're trying to meet around efficiency, around demand response, around sustainability, all of these different things. So um, yeah, a, a, that's, we're we're kind of we're right in sync there as far as you know how do we make sure we're you know applying this at the the next level of depth and, um, yeah, and there's a lot that the platform across the board brings to that with with Salesforce some things in fact too what's great you know having come as an ISP partner now being part of Salesforce some things that you know we now um, I like to think of it as this platform that lets our customers have the comfort of everything kind of coming together, but they can choose where they want to start. And now we as an industry group get to take advantage of some of the great work that Salesforce has done across the board. You know, it's like having a new bag of tools, honestly. It's sort of right. like, oh, wow, how can I apply that to make utilities lives better? And and yeah, no, and then the extended partner network is amazing, right? And so you, uh, we, we're always, you know, looking to see how can we go deeper with our partners. But we do have to probably finish our conversation by talking about, you know, the the the, the pandemic we find ourselves in, and what its impact has been on digital transformation. You know, so from where you sit, how do you see COVID has as affecting the pace of digital transformation or the goals of digital transformation in the in the utility industry? Yeah, I'll talk about a few observations, and um, you know, uh, I guess I'll, I'll go back to too. I uh, since we're kind of coming to the end, we do hope everybody out there is staying healthy and um, taking care of themselves and and their 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 neighbors, their families, their friends, and and I think you know, just it as a broad observation, I think we have uh, seen you know. Uh, every, everybody in in many of our neighborhoods come together around COVID and in the companies that we work with come together very quickly. So back to the heart of your question, I think, you know, huge challenges that we're all facing together and precedented in, in, um, in our time. However, what I've seen from our customers and from the utilities that we work with around the world, I've seen people very quickly move and move together to make change. We saw almost everyone that we worked with within days, or, you know, some cases, you know, just a few days, some cases, a couple of weeks, move employees that needed to be remote, remote, including multi-country contact centers that were able to 
you know, uh, multi-continent contact centers that were able to move remotely very, very rapidly. Um, we have also seen uh, adapted field work uh, in, and frankly, you know, the uh, ability to pivot very quickly. Um, some of the things that utilities know really well from the field work space applied more broadly. You know, we've seen like there, there's a broader need to schedule and to manage people and where they are and assets and, and physical locations and things. And so I don't know if you're familiar with the salesforcework.com capabilities, but we've done a whole lot with um, both in energy and utilities and with industry across the board to kind of help manage people and work and how um, things can continue to be done and done safely. Specific to digital transformation, I, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's we we nobody wants COVID here, but it's been a, a catalyst for many. So, mm -hmm. you know, definitely utilities are looking at their budgets and they're looking at what's essential um, going forward. And um, you know, have been in a period of readjustment. We've you know got anticipated and sometimes already hitting um, increased bad debt, those types of things. But the ability to digitally serve. Um, to serve their customers online and remotely, one, mm -hmm. to have service anywhere, to have you know work from anywhere, and to continue to provide the same, if not better, service in a time where they really need it, especially for you know core utilities essential services, right? Um, is critical. So we've seen projects that include the digital experience, that include digital service, that include um, you know digitization of the frontline, uh, you know front office workers in any form stay on the roadmap or accelerate on the roadmap where possible. Um, and yeah, I, I've seen it as, you know, one of the times in history where folks can just say, you know what, <laughs> we used to have all these rules and reasons why we couldn't do things. Everybody's come together and say, yeah, like we, let's figure out how we can do this and done it. And right. so we, we continue to see more of that. There are pressures, no doubt. Like there are, there are real pressures out there, financial and otherwise. Um, but I, we we see it um, the pace of change increasing. So and I, we we see it similarly, and I'll just give two examples: one from the customer side, and one from the utility side. You know, part of digital transformation is is really about the customers who are being served by a business uh, also embracing the fact that digital transformation benefits them, <laughs> um, right? That they are part of the digital journey too. It's not just a cost cutting measure that an industry is taking. Uh, and calling it digital transformation, right? I just don't want right. to take any phone calls from you anymore. So deal with deal with the chatbot. That's my digital transformation. You know, yeah. that's that that it shouldn't be the the way. But what we've seen is actually customer engagement go up during COVID. So you know, we track things like um, uh, engagement rates and open mm -hmm. rates of emails and web visits yeah. and so on and so forth. And there's no doubt that you know the interaction between the consumer and the utility uh, has shown a you know significant spike in terms of the metrics that we track. Um, so maybe people have more time at home. Maybe, you know, people are just more connected and, and, and they don't ignore emails and alerts that a utility might send them. So COVID has opened up an opportunity, you know, for the utility to basically increase their level of engagement, I believe, mm -hmm. with the consumer. The consumers have signaled that they are more willing to accept uh, interactions from the utility during, this, during these kinds of situations, right, where, where the world has changed. And then from the utility side as well, you know, we've seen examples of utilities being very creative about taking uh, processes that required physical outdoor presence and yeah. moving and digitizing them. And a, and a great example is a field audit. The analytics are still being done by the field audit person remotely, but the arms and legs, if you will, belong to the consumer at home who now has an app and a camera, obviously, on their phone in order to, you know, walk around, right, and do the inspection themselves, if you will, uh, yeah. being instructed. So, so I do think, you know, the one, you know, it's not a benefit per se, but one, one uh, effect of COVID, I think, at least we, we see it similar to you, that it might speed up the process of digital transformation. And in the long term, in the long term, and hopefully that comes soon, you know, provide yeah. net benefits both to the consumer uh, and to the utility uh, itself. Yeah, we see creativity like that and, and, you know, just the willingness to come together and to create something fast that works. Um, it fits really well into, you know, what's also kind of a, a, tra a, a hallmark or of our um, our successful implementations, which is like truly 
agile deployments, frankly. And so it's a different world. We've seen our customers with us deploy things, even pre-COVID, that historically would have been six to 12, even 18 month waterfall mm-hmm. type cycles. And we're talking 12 weeks to MVP, 12 weeks to first launch. And then they're rolling out new capabilities to those users every say, um, and those users users could be employees or they could be the end customers every three weeks. Um, as long as we're doing it smartly in a way that folks understand or, and is either zero disruption for the customer side or tiny bit of training on the employee side sometimes. So, um, I mean, I think that that and the example that you gave of, of pivoting to, you know, customer assisted uh, or customer led assisted audits. audits. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Um, I've also heard a lot about, um, you know, companies, customers who have uh, upticks in um in business, uh, the business side, CNI audits, because while while buildings were empty, it's actually yeah, it's <laughs> something that can be right. done, right? Um, with with little interaction, frankly. And so, yeah, I think this like uh, willingness to be agile and creative, and uh, and to kind of take that the what was maybe a little scary before, it's now sort of it's just necessary. And so, um, and utilities are getting it done. And so yeah, we're trying to make and, sure and, we and, help them. And <laughs> and I think, you know, the good thing, you know, we, we all look to have a purpose in our lives. And I think the good thing for both, um, you know, Salesforce and for Bidgely is, you know, we are contributing our part or, or playing our part in mm-hmm. hopefully what is a longer fruitful journey for, you know, consumers and for utilities themselves. Yeah. And I'd be remiss if I didn't kind of go back one more time to sustainability as well. I mean, we've seen a lot of utilities continue to sort of put a stake in the ground and say the changes that we're putting in, the changes that some that COVID are driving and that the world is driving will be met and better met by creating a more sustainable future. It's something that I'm passionate about, something that Salesforce is passionate about. Salesforce has you know done a ton uh, of our of our own work on on our own sustainability and um, you know uh, reducing our carbon footprint down with some really um, strong and aggressive targets. We've done a lot on our building standards and our and um, encouraging this in all of our partners as well. It's really it's important to us, and so we're trying to support um, utilities in those in those efforts as well and through some of the means we've already talked about today. So yeah, I I love to continue to see that. Yeah. So. So Kelly, it was great catching up with you today, um, and uh, I'm hoping that you know we we, we outlined many interesting things that uh, you know our products and our companies can do together. So looking forward to implementing many of those. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, thank you, and, and thank you everybody for joining us today. <laughs> thank you guys. Thanks. Um, Okay, so for anybody who uh, wasn't here in the previous days, um, my name is Colin Gibbs, uh, Vice President of Strategy and Growth for Bidgley, based up here in Portland, Oregon. Um, So Kelly, just going to ask you a few more questions, if you don't mind. I know that whole format was uh, was Q&A, but let's just keep it going. So um, I, you know, admittedly hadn't heard a lot about, um, you know, Salesforce um, in terms of involvement in the utility industry, and I've been in the industry now for... uh, about 12 years or so. And so maybe the past two or three years really in earnest. And so I'm just curious, um, you know, from your perspective, a lot of the solutions that you talked about, um, sort of more modern digital solutions, whether it's service cloud um, or marketing cloud, if that sort of new entrance of of Salesforce related uh, solutions is just perceived, or if that is reality that we're seeing a much more rapid rate of adoption um, right now of those types of solutions. Yeah, thanks, Colin, and and hi everybody live now. Um, also, I'll, I'll warn you guys that I am having one of these unexpected weather events, and so if I disappear suddenly, it's because of the lightning and thunder above my home right now. Um, please call Austin Energy for for support at that point. <laughs> um, so yeah, g- great question. I think it's it's both. Uh, it is uh, some of it is a perceived, uh, or sorry, some of it is that we've been in the energy and utilities industry as Salesforce for quite a long time. Um, In fact, Salesforce serves around the world over 500 utilities or energy services providing companies, 500. And some of those are quite 
uh, you know, some will be quite small implementations, um, pockets, and certain products, and some are uh, thousands of users broad and entire contact centers, uh, sales and engagement centers, and, and middle office and field work, etc. So it's it's a mix. Um, so there is it's kind of this uh, the situation where we've been in the industry for a long time and been a little bit um, quiet about it, maybe. And then on the flip side. Uh, with the acquisition of Velocity, I talked about this a bit uh, already, but with the acquisition of Velocity and the uh, newly reimagined Salesforce industries, uh, we're really leaning in on industries and on energy and utilities. And we have some big announcements, which I can't quite announce today, but um, stay tuned on September 30th for even um, bigger announcements in this space. Wow, what a teaser. Um, I know, sorry. <laughs> um, but, but really excited to lean in on energy and utilities and products in this area. Great. Yeah, it's too bad this isn't a live conference because we could continue to work on you throughout the day to see if we could get that out of you. Chip away at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how would you characterize at this point, um, you know, sort of the adoption rate, if you will, um, across the different sort of utility sectors? So, you know, electric versus gas versus water utilities. Specific to Salesforce? Yeah, specific to, you know, we'll say more sort of digital transformation tools that your company offers. Right. Uh, yeah, I think we saw earlier uptake in uh, earlier adoption in um, competitive retail energy markets, electric and gas markets, both. Um, and then as well as with some of our products around uh, uh, our field service offerings, our service offerings specifically, and even um, with the acquisition of MuleSoft um, by Salesforce, we, we have a number of customers around the world on our MuleSoft integration platform. Um, now though, uh, and in the past, I'd say even five years, uh, the acceleration of adoption in, in regulated utilities and in water utilities of, um, of the utility specific service features um, and the service cloud application, as well as, uh, you know, more of the digital direct to customer engagement, we call the, the ability to interact directly with your customer, the communities part mm -hmm. of Salesforce, because um, we're building communities there with with your customers and your partners. So more and more of that uh, and much larger the implementations of this um, across uh, large swaths of the workforce, as well as uh, supporting customers and in, in very large utilities. Great. Um, Shannon in the audience is curious as to whether or not uh, Velocity offers a billing component um, to its suite. Great question. Uh, so Velocity, as you guys know, now acquired into Salesforce. Um, Salesforce does have uh, Salesforce billing, which has some uptake in parts of, of utilities. What we most often see, though, with energy and utilities companies, is they're trying to transform with Salesforce the kind of front and front middle office. So customer service agents, digital direct to customer communications, and some of those journeys with marketing cloud. And in that case, we have, um, we, we're typically integrating with either the billing system that exists there with the utility, or if they're doing a massive transformation of both of these systems at the same time, we're coming in with one of our, our partner organizations. So this means, just to, to get real specific, this means we're integrating typically with a CCMB, an Oracle CCMB or an SAP ISU billing system, but replacing that front office layer. Um, or in some of the more competitive retail energy spaces or in some more kind of inventive areas or, or specific business units and use cases, it might be a targeted billing system fit for purpose, one of the newer cloud-based billing systems, things like um, GridX and Power Cloud in some parts of the world as examples. Absolutely. Great. Yeah, very helpful. Um, so you were at the end of the chat there talking about sustainability a little bit. Um, and you know, I gathered kind of sustainability from the perspective of what Salesforce as a business um, sort of does, right? Um, but I'm curious, you know, from your perspective, um, obviously sustainability is a, a you know, a major topic at the moment. I'm, I can't see much further down my street than maybe a, a block because of wildfire smoke. So, yeah. um, you know, it's something that that's top of mind. And obviously, um, utilities around the country are responding to, you know, ever more aggressive sort of state legislation um, to refine, um, we'll say sort of the, um, the resource mix, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm just curious, you know, from your standpoint, um, what, you know, Salesforce role um, might be in that sort of shift of, how to interact with consumers in the sense of trying to um, you know, decarbonize the grid, for example, or to mm -hmm. 
put more flexible resources from the demand side on the grid. And it doesn't have to be a Salesforce specific answer as much as what is the role of applications like this and helping to advance a cleaner grid. Yeah, uh, good. So yeah, we, we did already talk about some of the things Salesforce is doing. And, um, and as you rightly pointed out, I mean, it, this is in the front of everybody's mind now um, with, you know, the fires out west, um, with just the dramatic uh, shifts in, in climate and the increased weather events and, um, and other types of uh, disasters associated with that. So a couple of things that, that you know, I see and we see um, and especially this brings visually back into it, you know, the, the power of um, using, using the, the data that we have and um, understanding the customer's sentiments and needs, as well as the, the, the regulatory uh, pressures here, it comes together in kind of a really a perfect convergence of um, you have states and countries with mandates on uh, on zero carbon targets. Uh, you have utilities that you now see um, putting their own targets out there, whether they're mandated or not. And then some of those are, are even more aggressive than if folks are ahead of schedule. And then the convergence is really that um, it's not, you know, this is something that customers are, are demanding now. Their um, businesses are are demanding. It's it's important. You kind of have the three aspects, right? You have, uh, you know, the the cold analysis of of the facts and the figures. We have the um, emotional and the social components of this that apply to both businesses and and um, and your residential users. And so, when it comes back to the role of technology, there, I think it's to help provide the data to help service. Um, the information to both the customer and then um, back to the necessary information back to the to the grid operators to help balance what's coming into play in terms of distributed energy resources. So there is a, a convergence there of incentivizing customers to and, and advising them. We're all about, you know, how do we advise more? Advising them on what moves to make and then making sure that we are applying the analytics and understanding and planning for the impact of that um, on, on the grid so we can all work together towards these targets. Yeah, great answer. Um, I, I have a, a thought um, that I'm gonna to attempt to turn into a question. Um, so if I fail at that, you can tell me this is a really poorly worded question, I'll try again. Yeah. Um, but so sort of an interesting construct here in North America um, around how we fund energy efficiency programs. And I'm, I'm offering it that way just because I think in the international space, it's a very different model, but you know, in effect having revenue decoupling in place for utilities around many jurisdictions in the US, allowing for um, you know, energy efficiency programs that, that, that don't reduce revenue for uh, you know, the utilities that offer them, but also sort of like rate payer funded to use the unfriendly term, customer funded would be the better way to put it. Um, you know, programs that all kind of fit into this energy efficiency or demand side management, um, you know, budget category within the utility. And yet, you know, you know, Bidgley has delivered home energy reports for, for years. And those are programs that reach a ton of customers, um, many more customers than, than um, a lot of standard sort of utility communications actually like engage customers with. And so, you know, we have kind of this sort of, at least I personally have this um, sort of operating theory that um, rather than thinking about energy efficiency programs as something distinctly different from the, the sort of experience that a customer would have with a utility, to think about them perhaps as, you know, the centerpiece of that engagement and a, an effective customer engagement strategy can, as a derivative, generate energy and demand savings. And so, you know, I think we have an interest in trying to paint that vision. My question to you is, do you agree? Um, do you think that there is a, a way to take sort of the traditional energy efficiency program model and weave that seamlessly into a much broader um, sort of comprehensive customer engagement strategy rather than looking at them as these distinct silos? Yeah, I definitely agree that these, these shouldn't be siloed. You don't have, you know, I don't have as a consumer an energy efficiency experience and another experience, right? right. I have one experience. And so um, this, the silos exist for uh, largely, you know, historical budget reasons and priority, you know, the, the focus and priorities, that makes sense. But from taking the lens, as many of your, your presenters on previous days have talked about, just putting on the consumer and, and its business as well as residential, but the consumer glasses and saying, I'm looking through the lens of, of the customer and what is the threaded experience like for them? Because they don't, they don't think in terms of the separation um, 
Also, Varun said it well, you know, I, I care about one thing one day, another. It's a fluid experience. We care about all of these things. They just take different priorities at different times, and it's all about a balance. So messaging that way and at that speed, to pull it back to AI, is why we need some of this AI involved. So you take those programs that are highly engaging, you know, I think 75% reach typically on home energy reporting programs, often in a fully deployed model and thread that into how your your messaging to your customers the different things that that you know that they want to do and you want them to do that will help you as well um so taking action and that crosses energy efficiency programs and it also crosses um behavioral uh programs that save you money that help you engage with them more to drive them to to other places um there is, so, there, you know, it often takes breaking down silos in the organization and looking at, okay, this, this budget um, is, is available for these things by definition and, and by outside factors. And then we need to come up with this because the overall plan is going to benefit both us, the utility, and the customer by X. And that's, you know, we're helping, um, Salesforce is helping some companies put that together as well. And even with, you know, rate case um, support. Great, yeah, that's a very comprehensive answer. Um, I have one more question for you. Um, and it sounds as though Sharon, who is asking a question, and I were kind of on similar wavelengths, but her question is a tad more specific. And it is, how much alignment and cooperation are Bidgley and Salesforce seeing between the IT side of uh, the house with the utility and then the customer and marketing and EE program managers who have all these new customer requirements? Um, so you could provide an answer and I'll provide my, my um, view of it as well. Okay, as some, but we could see more. That's my, my short answer. I think, um, I think there's an awareness that, uh, that utilities should and want to be doing this, but um, in some cases they feel able to, and in some cases it's still a bit siloed. What's your experience, Tom? Yeah, no, very similar, very similar. I've seen, um, I think instances where there is a very comprehensive and uniform strategy um, at some utilities, but not all. Um, I think a good example to, to prop up one of our customers here is Matt Halloran um, out of Vista. I mean, very, very comprehensive view of the landscape um, that was seen all the way from the beginning stages of the way the RFP was written to like the conversations that we are now having as we get closer to, to executing the strategy. Um, and so there are, there are absolutely cases of a, of a very comprehensive view where multiple departments within the utility are part of a collaboration and doing that correctly. Um, but there are, for every example uh, that I just described there, there's another for, you know, utility has made massive investments in, um, we'll say sort of the enterprise architecture, but hasn't really woven in any of the, the, the individual programs or marketing aspects and vice versa, very comprehensive DSM programs and marketing efforts, but lacking the infrastructure to deliver on that in the long term. So I think really exciting kind of view of the next couple of years is how these things do get kind of harmoniously put together. So lots of progress still to be made. Yeah, a Vista, um, a mutual customer of ours as well. So lots of great yeah. benefits. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, all the effort that you, you put in. And I do have to say I'm a little bit jealous of the thunderstorm that you're getting right now. So hopefully we <laughs> yeah, can. Yeah, sorry about that. We'll try to send some <laughs> rain your way. Thank you to Bidgley and to everybody uh, listening today. We, we do appreciate, uh, appreciate your time and stay safe and stay, stay healthy. And, and we keep looking out for each other. Thanks. Likewise, thank you, Kelly. Take care.